Hello there, my name's Jamie, and in this video, I'm gonna be going into a bit more detail about how these smart thermostats think differently and communicate differently with the boiler, because it's so important that you understand this before you go and buy a new smart thermostat. Most people think that you know a smart thermostat is just controlling it from your phone, but it really, really isn't. So if you go and buy any old smart thermostat that can be controlled from the phone, there's a good chance that you're gonna be missing out on some really valuable savings and way more efficiency and you know performance from that smart thermostat. So stick with me because I know that this can be a bit of a boring subject because I'm not talking about the cool stuff that you know the app does and how it can connect with Alexa and all that thing. But this honestly will change everything for you. So let's start off, start off by thinking about how a traditional thermostat would work, okay? Now, typically we'll turn the thermostat up to say 21 degrees and literally the boiler would have no information other than I need some heat. And obviously it will throw some heat into the radiators which will ultimately increase the room temperature, but the thermostat isn't doing any thinking. It's not really acknowledging that the heat is rising, not until the point that let's say, for example, this is where you know a line that we want to be at is 21 degrees and our temperature is rising. It doesn't actually shut off until it gets to that temperature that we've set. So it's like, great, I'm warm enough now, turn off. But the problem that we have is our radiators are still hot. So obviously, in order to get rid of the heat that's within the radiator, it needs to heat the room after we've told it to turn off. So we end up with what we call in the industry an overshoot. And when that overshoot occurs, you know, most of the time you feel a bit stuffy and a bit warm and, you know, you're not as comfortable as what you would be if you were where you wanted to be. Then that thermostat, the old school thermostats, they wouldn't trigger back on when you were at the temperature you wanted to be. It would trigger back on when you fell below the temperature you want to be. Then we have a problem of the catching up process. So you end up with it going, come back on. Oh, wait, you know, I've still got to get the heat back into the radiators. And then it, all, it obviously finally catches up with itself and starts bringing it back up. So you end up with this curve, which looks like that. So it's over, under, over, under. You're never really just right. You're always either too hot or not quite hot enough. So wasteful. And you know, why we live in that, in that sort of uh, way when we are in the 21st century, obviously we've got lots of software that can think about this stuff differently. So that's where these guys come in because they have a completely different way of thinking about things. Now, this is where people begin to get a little bit lost, so stick with me. So let's start off by talking about what a modulating control is. So a modulating control is a control which can override and make decisions on behalf of the boiler. So previously a boiler wouldn't get any information other than I need some heat. It would have a, a, like a dial on the front of it most likely which you, you set and then it would work to achieve that temperature of radiators. Whereas when you've got a modulating control plugged into it, the thermostat will be thinking and using information that it's collected over a period of time to decide whether or not we were gonna have hotter radiators now or cooler radiators now. So let me explain what that looks like. So let's just let's go back to this uh, line that we're looking for, let's say 21 degrees and you know, we've turned the heating on and the house is currently sat at 10 degrees. Now the thermostat will be looking at that and analyzing and thinking, okay, well look, we're at 10 degrees now, we wanna to get to 21 degrees. That's quite a lot of heat, it's a big difference that we're gonna you know, have to try and get shorter as quickly as possible. So let's throw a load of heat into the radiators and that's gonna get our room temperature up pretty quickly. So radiators get red hot, temperature rises real quick. And as it starts approaching, uh, the, the temperature that we're asking for, let's say 21 degrees, let's say 18 degrees, then the thermostat will be picking that up and going, right, we're getting closer now. So now what we need to do is turn the temperature of the radiators down so that eventually we just start trickling the heat in. And once you start trickling the heat in, you end up with this nice flat line air temperature where it's matching the heat loss in the room. So it will put in as much as it's being taken out. And I can't tell you how much of a difference that makes to the way that your house feels. Not only that though, the boiler will be running at a lower temperature at that point and will be burning a nice long continuous flame, which is way healthier for the boiler instead of having to shut down, start up and go through the whole ignition process again. It will just be ticking along. It's kind of relatable to cruising down the motorway, um, you know, at 70 miles an hour just trickling the fuel in so that you can match it perfectly to, to cruise along. Way more efficient, way much easier on your car 
than what it is when you go in straight up to 90 and then down to 50 and then up to 90, you know, you're going to put a lot of wear onto the board, onto your car. Um, talking about cars now. Um, you're going to put a lot more wear onto the car versus putting, putting wear onto the boiler. So, you know, that's a modulating control. But the thing is, not all boilers speak this language and, you know, different boilers have different languages and it's understanding which thermostats speak what language, right? So to give you an example, Valent, they, a Valent boiler has its own language. So if, you're, if you've got a Valent boiler which is less than five years old, let's say, just to guarantee it, then your boiler is going to be able to have a modulated control into it, but it's only going to modulate if you plug into it a Valent control. So Valent have a, an app controlled thermostat which is called the VSmart. It's a really clever piece of kit. It uses the inside air temperature and it uses outside air temperature to be able to determine what temperature radiators need to be and all this clever stuff. You even get on the app, you get a graph to show you how well it's performing. It's wicked. Um, Worcester boilers, let's say you've got a Worcester boiler last five years, then it's going to speak its own language. So if you've got a Worcester, your best thermostat for you is going to be the app control thermostat that Worcester have, which is called the Worcester Wave. Now, that doesn't mean that these thermostats aren't going to work in there. They're just not going to have that modulation control that I'm talking about. These thermostats in front of me, you've got the Honeywell Lyric T6, the Nest third generation, and the EPH uh, wireless programmable thermostat. These can speak a language called OpenTherm. Now, OpenTherm is a language which was created many years ago by Honeywell, it's just that in the UK we're a bit slow on the upkeep and you know get catching up with these things. But Open Therm has been used in countries in Europe for, for ages. You know, this whole modulating thing isn't new. Um, so Honeywell created it and obviously other boilers can make use of that language. And that then means that all of these thermostats can have this modulate modulation control that we're talking about. But it's important to know which boilers have open therm and which ones don't. So, I mean, things are always changing. So, you know, things might be different. You need to find out. But to give you an idea, I know for a fact that the Baxi 200, 400, 600, and 800, <laughs> don't ask me why they have so many models for the same boiler, they all speak the open therm language. And I've used open therm on them boilers with the Nest, the Honeywell, and the EPH, and it's worked great. Um, Wiesmann 100s, they speak open therm. Uh, Ideal Logics, they have open therm. And uh, there's a couple more manufacturers. I can't remember them off the top of my head. The point I'm trying to make is find out. Just Google it, just ring up your manufacturer and see if you can dig it. If you get stuck, get in touch with me. So that's an open therm language. What are you gonna do if your boiler isn't able to speak these languages that I'm talking about? Well, there is another way of communicating which is almost as good, but not quite. And that's called TPI, and that stands for Time Proportional uh, ooh, Integral, I think. I need to double check that. I will uh, drop it in what it is. I can confirm that it is Time Proportional Integral, which doesn't mean too much to anybody, I'm sure. All you need to know is that it's still pretty clever. So let me just quickly explain what that means. Uh, rather than wait until it gets to the right temperature and have an overshoot, the thermostat can learn that we know the overshoot is going to happen. So let's just turn off before it gets there. The overshoot will occur, but we'll get to the temperature that we want. And then before it dips, we'll just kick it back in again, just to like maintain almost like a flat line. So it's almost as good, but not quite, because it doesn't then bring your boiler's temperature down to stay in its efficient condensing mode and all this sort of stuff. But it's still going to make a huge difference to the way that your house feels and all that sort of stuff. So I don't need to go into TPI too much. You just need to know that it exists on, you know, certain thermostats and things like that. Some still don't use it, you know, um, which is crazy. There's also another form of modulated control, which I'm not going to go into too much detail about, called weather compensation. And basically that is where we put a sensor outside and it will then relay information back to the boiler to say whether or not it's a really cold day that day or whether it's you know, 10 degrees or whatever, it's quite mild. Um, and then obviously the boiler then can figure out whether it needs to have a higher temperature or a lower temperature radiator because on a milder day you don't need as much heat. Um, but I don't think that it's that you know, important when we've got thermostats on the inside recognising that there's extra heat loss. 
so I just don't really see, see the need for it. I've done it in the past where I've had purely weather compensated systems, but the customers were complaining that when they turn it on, it takes ages to heat up. And you know, I'd prefer a thermostat to go, we need a lot of heat, we're gonna give it you now, and then we're gonna adjust ourselves later. That's way better from, from my perspective. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't need to go into that in too much detail. And I also don't wanna go, I don't want this video to go on for much longer either. Um, so I'm just gonna try and wrap it up. Some of the most commonly, question, uh, commonly asked questions, frequently asked questions that I get, is you know do you need to have a combi boiler to be able to plug these modulating controls in? The answer is no, you can have a system boiler, but the boiler needs to be able to know when it's asking for hot water and heating, which means you usually have to have to buy like a special um, brain, so to speak, where you wire everything into it, uh, which adds another couple of hundred pounds onto the job. So much easier when you've got a combi boiler because the brain is already in the boiler and everything is all worked out for you. Um, so if you've got a tank and you, you know, you've got a hot water tank and you've got a system boiler or an, op an open vented boiler, it can work, I've made it work, but there's a few things that you uh, you need to take into consideration, okay? It's just, it goes on to a bit more of an advanced level, not time for that, not time for this video, but it can work. Let me know if you want that. I can sort you out with that, okay? Thank you very much for watching the video. Honestly, I know it's been a bit long and to, some, to most people, if you're not a geek like me, then uh, this is a, a bit tedious, but if you know what an open firm, you, if you know you've got an open firm boiler, then you know you need an open firm thermostat. Simple as that, it's really important. All right, so thank you very much again for watching the video, guys. Um, look out for the, the rest of the information regarding the Nest giveaway that we're gonna um, have coming up. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much, bye-bye.